All right, guys. Hello, my name is Sebastian. I'm here with Heather today, and we're going to do a uh, tutorial on the obliques, right? Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover some of the exercises we did, I think, last week or two weeks ago for the plank, because you had some side planks. Uh, but what I think we should do, yes? Oh, camera right here. Yeah. Hey, Carlos. <laughs> so uh, we're going to start with a cable exercise to give you a little something a little different. Okay. And as always, you know the format. Uh, if you have any questions, you, sh you pop them on the chat. Christian is going to read it to us. Uh, and then we're going to move quick. Okay. Unless you, you want us to elaborate on a specific point and a specific movement, a body alignment. Okay. Uh, what was the announcements I need to make? Oh, that's right. Yeah. So this Sunday, I'm going to do a workout with Heather and we're actually going to have, we're going to have a guest Janice. And by the way, if you are in the Chatsworth area, we're going to start doing classes, Heather and I, and a guest. And I think we're going to do a contest. Yeah, we're going to, we're going to announce it. Heather is obsessed with contest. So we're going to do a contest of who gets to do a class with us each month. So if you think you got what it takes, uh, it takes, uh, it takes, what it takes, it takes, it takes, yeah. Uh, we will, uh, anyway, we will, uh, the, the winner uh, each month will be here working out with us. We are actually, you guys don't see it, but we are expanding our shooting areas. We've moved a lot of stuff uh, from this warehouse. And then we're going to start to transform the space into basically a full production studio. So you'll see a lot more videos. Um, but anyway, so we will be able to accommodate more than one person uh, on the stage. So you know, it'd be fantastic if you guys want to join us and do a, a workout with us. Yes, exactly. Workout next to the boss right here. Okay, so obliques, guys. Where are the obliques? Sides over here, right? You have internal, external obliques. Function of the obliques is to uh, support the spine laterally, also to rotate the trunk. So, you know, if you do any kind of those movements, uh, you will target the obliques. Uh, very easy to target the obliques. Uh, first one that we're going to do is the kneeling torso twist, okay? When you do the kneeling torso twist on the micro, unless, you know, Heather probably can do a version where she kneels on the carriage, but depending on your size, you may or may not be able to kneel on the carriage. So for everyone, we're going to do the kneeling torso twist standing on the back of the micro. And I'm really sorry because today we actually change the direction of the micro. Usually we have the micro facing that way or facing the other way, whatever, facing that way, yeah. So we're throwing you off, okay. So what do you do is this, uh, you're gonna grab the handles, you're gonna interlock your fingers, okay. You're gonna keep your hands basically about a uh, level of the chest and you're gonna sl slowly rotate out away from the micro. If you are facing, facing the direction that Heather is facing right now, she's working the left side. Of course, you're not isolating the left side. If you're working the left side of the, micro, uh, the, the obliques, the right side is also working. But here, the focus is on the left side, okay? Uh, very important uh, uh, point about this exercise is that when you do this movement, you want to rotate your ribs only. You don't want to rotate your hips and your ribs where your whole body basically turns to the side. Because when you do that, you're missing the rotation of the trunk. And that's really one of the primary function of the oblique. So you really want to isolate the position of your hips. You want your hips to be facing out, or basically you want your hips to be perpendicular or parallel, but facing perpendicular to the micro. And then you're going to rotate out slowly, pulling uh, from your abs. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. If you don't feel that enough, just use a one arm uh, a kneeling torso twist and that will definitely help you engage the left side. Also, if you don't feel like you have enough tension, you can always scoot out to the side. And that's the beauty about the micro and that's the beauty about integrating the floor in the exercise is the fact that you can actually move out and then out and then out. Now I got some news for you because so many of you have asked for it. We're going to do it we are going to make a small extension to the micro. So it's going, to, it's going to come out later this year and it'll be basically an extra eight to 10 inches. So basically you're gonna have a number five available for the micro because a lot of people have asked for more range. So um, you will be able to do that. So that's going to come later this year. Okay, so kneeling torso twist. Uh, what else do we have? 
uh, you know, you can actually grab the handle right here and you just can pull up and over, you know? So remember those exercises you kind of do at the gym where you have the, the dumbbells and you dish for the obliques. And that got a lot of bad press because they say that that actually thickened the obliques. Um, I'm not entirely sure that this actually could thicken the obliques. I think what thickens the obliques is the fucking lard around your waist size. That fucking thickens the obliques, okay? <laughs> so, you know, but anyway, so that will be a, ver a version of the kneeling torso twist. Um, yeah, so, so on this one, I'm going to put a white spring for you. Okay, so for all this exercise, the white spring is coming. I'm, I'm going to get you an announcement soon. I think it's actually on the boat on the way here. So I think if you guys have already pre-ordered the white spring, we should be able to deliver them uh, next month. Make sure that you have a white spring for these ones because um, these types of movements are very technical. And so in order to do this, you really need a light, light spring, the lightest spring. The black spring is unfortunately too heavy. I'm sorry about that. Uh, the white spring will be, be basically better. And then the movement here is not a bending movement. The movement is to go up and over. Always important to have the direction of going up and open and, and over so that you can keep that space open between the vertebrae. You're not doing a straight crunch like that, okay? So the direction is up and over. And then you're not going to be crunching as much or collapsing the space between your, your, your vertebrae as you, you bend over. Yes. So that's also another great uh, variations right here, for, right here for the obliques. Uh, the other one that we're doing last week, uh, you had also uh, the Nighthawk, which I really like. Uh, the version of the Nighthawk on the back or which one is the, the one you had where you had? Uh... No, the one you're on the side and you kind of went like this. Yeah, these ones. Yeah, that one. So for the side plank, so for the side plank, you can also just do the side plank on its own. But here I love combining the side plank with the cable. But again, the tension must be really light. And I only recommend to do this with the one white spring. The black spring is just simply too much. Uh, the white spring only gives you five pounds of tension when the carriage reaches all the way uh, uh, to the, the, the rear platform. So it's only five pounds. So it's very much easier to do. This type of exercise, if you use too much tension, it's gonna make you collapse. And that's beside the point. So you need to have just, just enough tension for that one. So that's a version of the side plank that we talked about briefly, I think, uh, last time. And I love that. Because the action of the right arm, uh, the right arm over here is forcing you to even stabilize even more with the obliques. Again, you wanna keep your body alignment. So whenever you do a macro movement, when you have multiple movers or you have multiple major muscles working, um, you wanna make sure that the, the alignment is correct for all the joints, okay? Uh, go ahead and collapse your hips on this one. So that would not be a correct. If you are doing it this way, then might as well just stop it, not use the cable and just go back and just uh, focusing on just keeping the basic structure stable, basically keeping the hips aligned, the knees and the shoulders. Any questions about this movement right here? So now Heather is showing you a modified version. So if now you're on your hands and then you're on your elbow and you're on your feet and you feel like your hips are collapsing, then you can drop on your knees and keep the same alignment. And then you have a wonderful fly here. Just, uh, I don't know where that fly come from, you know, probably from uh, China it was in the, in, the, in the micro, it was in the crate. All right, so, so slowly extending out. Any questions about this one? Very good exercise, love that one. Uh, if you wanna make this even more an oblique uh, focused exercise, you can have the hand in front of you like this, arm straight, and then kind of rotate your body out to the side. So now try to get an, exter in, in a, an external rotation with the, the ribs. So kind of a side plank and a torso twist at the same time. And this will get you all three functions of the obliques. And now this is when you really start to get, you know, real results. Uh, the reason why you guys are getting, you know, quick results on the mega is because you're always stabilizing the obliques. It's, 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 it doesn't matter which exercise you do. Uh, it doesn't have to be a kneeling torso twist. If you do a lunge, if you do a skater, anything on that carriage will mobilize your obliques. And this is where you get really quick results. Very good, excellent. What else we have up here with the, the cable? We have the kneeling torso twist. 
Oh, yes. Well, we can show you the scrambled eggs because the scrambled eggs is actually an oblique exercise. So we can show that to you. I think you guys are going to like the scrambled egg better when we have the pulleys finally out. But yeah, this is like a little bit uh, here. For the scrambled eggs, we have to remove those handles. Yeah. That's okay. I will take this one off too. There you go. <clears throat> so when you do that scrambled eggs, what you want to make sure is that basically your hands are just cleared off the carriage. And again, uh, I'm going to show you here with my body cam. What you want to make sure is that if you look at Heather's over here, she is not moving her spine at all. So as she extend the right leg back and forth, right? As the right leg moves, the hips and the shoulders remain in that square. It doesn't change. A lot of people, when they do this exercise, that spine kind of sway to the left. What they do is they kind of do this. They kind of collapse right here like that. They put all the weight on the left. And now you can see that there's no straight line. So you got to make sure in order to mobilize the oblique, to activate the obliques, you want to make sure that you are keeping your hips and your shoulders aligned and that basically your torso, your trunk is not moving as you pull the carriage out to the right side. Very nice. Uh, you don't need the rear platform for this. The rear platform that definitely makes it more uh, comfortable, but you can definitely do it uh, with your knee on the floor, uh, not on the, on the rear platform if you don't have it. Good, excellent. Uh, Oh, I can't believe we missed this one. Yes. Okay. So the tailbone torso twist. Okay. So you can do it uh, uh, facing the side. And that is also another great way to stabilize uh, or to mobilize the obliques. Um, you can do it if your legs up in the air or legs bent, you know, however you want. And then just, again, you're just focusing on the external rotation. When you rotate that trunk, you don't want your hips to move at all. You want your hips to be facing just the same direction. Try to hold that stomach in. You kind of want you to tuck the tailbone under a little bit, have a slouch arch over here just to protect the lumbar. Uh, and the form is going to be uh, the same uh, as, the, uh, as the mega. Now, I'm going to ask you because I can, I can see you guys kind of falling asleep a little bit over there. So I'm going to ask you a question. Um, what is the difference between the tailbone torso twist on the floor and the micro? versus on the carriage on the mega. What's the main difference? Do, 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 do. <laughs> What's the difference? Come on, the chat room, chat box right here. No? No, Tokyo? Oh, stable on the floor versus instability on the carriage. You're not pulling your weight. That's true on the carriage. And yes, yeah, both true. So both stable on the floor. On the carriage, you weight, and then on the mega, yeah, uh -huh. uh, yeah, and balance, and then of course the balance as you move the carriage, correct. So, so basically the fact that you are unstable on the uh, on the carriage on the mega, the fact that you have this back and forth movement and you pulling your body weight, is going to make this exercise a lot more. Um, a lot more focus on the obliques, okay? So always when you are able to do an ab exercise on the carriage, you get this additional benefit that you have to stabilize that spine. And that's really the, the purpose of all the muscles in the trunk, you know, your lats, your obliques, your erector spinus, your transverse abdominis, all these muscles work, you know, constantly when they're forced to stabilize the spine. So you get always that movement. This is why every single movement on the mega, when you move that carriage, is a core exercise. You know, that's, you don't have to think about it. It's just do anything you do on the mega is a fucking core exercise. All right, we'll get on to the next one. Okay, anything else you want to add over here? Yeah, the table and torso twist. That's an excellent one, by the way. And um, if you want a great combination of two exercises, you can do the tailbone torso twist with the side plank that Heather was doing and the cable when you rotate out. And that really uh, attacks the obliques with two perfect angles over there and that'll make it burn. But for the obliques, remember, it's all about technique. Okay, this is not, you can't cheat. The obliques are very, um, uh, they're very precise. Okay, 
um, we're going to remove this. And then if we think of, a, of another um, cable exercise, we'll let you know. The next one I'm going to go quickly over is a twister. So the twister is probably my favorite obliques and waist exercise. So this is a, this is a great exercise. Um, it works entirely from all the ribs to the hips. Okay. The thing that I want when you do the twister, and Heather's in the perfect form over here, because basically when you do the twister, okay, formerly known as the fucking teaser, um, keep the shoulders not right above the wrist, but slightly off. Okay. I don't want the shoulder to be too far back, but like Heather's position right here is perfect. And why do we want that? Why don't we want, why don't we want the shoulders right above the wrist? Why do we want the shoulders to be slightly off the, the, the position of the wrist in the chat room, uh, chat box? I'm going to give you five seconds, four seconds, three seconds for an answer, two seconds. Come on. Maintain optimal obliques engagement. Yes, but also that. Um, what you want to do is that you want to reduce the stress on the joints. And then by moving slightly back, now you're engaging, you're, you're engaging the triceps, shoulders, and lats. And now these are the muscles that are going to support uh, basically the impact. So when you do the catfish, when you do uh, the, uh, the twister or French twist, uh, the French twist are different actually because the French twist on the back against the tension and on the French twist, you can have your shoulders anywhere you want. It's just for the front. So just for the uh, catfish and uh, the twister, you want your shoulders slightly off until you can see the triceps kind of popping up and then you stay there. Now, the second point is this. You're going to keep your shoulders facing down the platform. You want to keep the shoulders also away from the ears, so the nice open space in the neck. And then your ribs are going to be slightly turned out, but not a lot, okay? You don't need a lot of turn. You just need the, the, the ribs to be slightly turned, and that's it, just to initiate basically the movement. And from there, pretend that the cable is attached to your, your tailbone, Cable is basically suspending your tailbone in the air. So basically, there's no movement at all in the trunk. The trunk is not moving forward or back. None of that stuff. Basically, it's just your feet that you bring under and over. And your obliques here are working, stabilizing your spine at that angle when you slightly twist it. This is super effective, and it works great. Also, the erector spinae. Oh, you can do single arm. And then you look at that. Look at the obliques popping out here. Darwin, can we get like a little focus on the obliques? Boom, there you go. Look at that, look, look at those lines right here. That's what you want, guys, right? Yeah, right there. If you do a one-arm twister, be very careful. And I would not teach that in class, though, because that's a sure way to uh, dislocate your shoulder or to kind of hurt yourself. So, but you can do it, okay? A one-arm twister is gonna put a lot more pressure on the obliques. And if you know what you're doing, look at those abs. Fucking love this. Boom, popping out. You see? No magic. Real stuff right there. Uh, so the twists are very good. Um, if you can't do the twister because you have lower back issues, then don't try to work through it. This is a modification. And basically on this one, you just pull from the knees. Uh, the other thing I'm going to show you is the position of the feet because I see people putting the feet in the wrong place all the time. Your feet should supposed to be aligned. So that toe right here behind, and basically what you have is like a straight line right over here. And whether you're on the micro, the mini, the proformer, the supra, whatever machine, this is the position that I want for your feet. That's how you're supposed to place your feet. Any questions so far? No? We're good? So you can also, so on the micro, if you want to, and on the mega, you can also place your hands on the front platform. Uh, can your heels be lifted? Yes, you can, you can lift your heels. I prefer to have the, uh, the heels down, you know, for the lower back, but you can also do it with your, with your, um, with your heels up. Uh, Seb, do you prevent people from overly relying on their arms in this move? Yes, and that's another reason why we want to kind of step back a little bit because if you step, if you, if you kind of move your body back a little bit and your shoulders are not right above the wrist, you're going to feel the lats engage. And that's really where, that's really what you want. You, you want to mobilize the lats because the lats is basically the largest muscle in your trunk. And you want to use that. If your body is too far forward, you're putting all the pressure on the shoulder joints. It's not even the shoulder muscle it's the shoulder joint that's taking all the hit. So you kind of want to pull back a little bit and then make sure you can feel those lats and then pull uh, and then make sure that you 
you can feel the lat stabilizing your spine as you pull your hips straight up and down. Uh, I find that those with weak cores have trouble while keeping shoulders slightly behind. Yes. Uh, so what you can do is you can change your feet position. So if you want to add a little bit more tension without adding a spring, what you will do is you will put your feet right on the front edge of the carriage. So if you move your feet all the way to the front over here, that's going to give you more of a boost. And that should help you to compensate for the weakness in the arms. But I, I, I rather have people do it that way with the right form at the beginning uh, than just try to have all the weight on the shoulders because when people put too much weight on the shoulders, I have no idea where that flight comes from. It was not here at all. And now that we started to film, that fly is here, motherfucker. I swear. Okay. All right. Um, so when you have too much weight uh, forward on the shoulders, then that's when you can start feeling basically uh, the uh, crunching the collarbone or even crushing the, uh, the, the cervicals. That's why I have to be, I like to be back a little bit. Okay, uh, we show you the one on the, uh, on the front over here, that one, okay? Uh, from that position, you can go auto, yeah, yes, yep. You can also do on the floor, okay? So when you're on the floor, this is gonna be a little different, okay? The easiest version of this exercise will be with the hands on the top of the handle. As you start to go down and put your hands on the floor, you are making it more and more uh, difficult. This is a great variation. And I actually, uh, I actually love the entire sequence. You start with a twister, then you go to a platform, and then you go to the floor like this. And then when you're, when you're on the floor there, you go, that's a new one. I like that. Okay, she, you guys get to name this one. All right, this is like a, well, or call, we can do better. I think we call it a, a, drunk, a drunken snake, <laughs> a drunken worm, 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 oh, I swear. Uh, yeah, and then look at that. Then you can go up and down. This is fantastic. I love this. See, I love these sessions. I learn all the time. Walking salamander. Yes, but I, I like that a lot, actually. Yeah, we could call this, we could call it, yeah. It has to be a drunken salamander, though. But yes, I like that. Walking salamander, a very good. Yes, how does that feel? That's good, excellent. Should have cleaned that floor too again today. Forgot, yeah. Okay, so this one, you, you see that? But you, you see how we're just playing the micro like this and then from one movement kind of leads to another and then go to another. That's, that's the whole thing about, the, this is why I make those machines this way so that you can just morph the movement. I, when you teach degree, and when you do degree, there should be no separation really between the sets. This is when I work out on the mega, I'm doing a movement and then I start to change and I do another movement, but there's not, there's not a point in time where I stop, I reset and do this other exercise. I want the workout to be continuous, right? Completely uninterrupted. And, you know, and then from there, you know, when you have your hands on the floor, you can go into a, a plank, plank to pike, you just, and you keep the party going. It's just like, it's really just keeps on going. Um, the one that we did, I think, last week, we showed you part of the plank, side planks. Love the side planks. Well, that's a great angle, Darwin. I like that. That's good. Yeah, that's, that's really good. Uh, so for the side plank again, just with all the planks, what am I looking for? Questions to you guys. Five, four, three, alignment. Yes, see? One word, alignment. Okay, yes. Because what happens, core stabilization, yes, yeah, so core stabilization will come with the alignment. What happens if your body is not aligned in this exercise? So drop your hips. That's it. And I see plenty of these fitness influencer, I hope they're not watching today, you know, doing like their perfect form. Yeah, you're not working the obliques, yeah, but you also what you're doing is you're adding a lot of stress on the joints. You know, it's a lot of stress, especially if you've done the workout for 25, 30 minutes. You know, your body's already fatigued, you know, and now you kind of form, kind of get sloppy a little bit. That's, that's the sure way of hurting yourself. So this is why you have to modify. You know, there's, no wrong, there's, 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 there's nothing wrong about modifying the exercise, getting on the knees. You know, we want to make sure that we always, and compression, absolutely. Yeah, we want to avoid compression in the spine. Not good. You know, especially when you think that, you know, uh, most of our most of our clients are women over 40 years old, you know, 50, um, you know, so at that age, you know, we got to make sure that we pay impeccable 
uh, uh, um, attention to uh, the body alignment so that we don't hurt uh, our clientele. Okay, well, that fly is really, really loving you. I don't know why. Yeah. So that's another version. So that would be a, we call this thread the needle. Thread the needle, yes. So I like that one. This one I love because again, you work all the functions of the obliques. You know, we have the lateral uh, stabilization, we have the spine stabil stabilization, right? The, the, the frontal and the lateral uh, stabilization. And then we have also the rotation of the ribs. And so it makes a perfect exercise. This is a perfect storm for, for, the, uh, for the obliques. But again, you know, I, I like it when you move very slowly like this and you're in full control of the exercise, you get so much more out of that. This is an exercise you go really super slow. And then you can see, you know, the obliques are working like crazy on this one. Very nice. Have you guys tried this exercise yet? Thread the needle? Yes. Good one. Yes. Oh, yes. So see, that's what I'm telling you about the floor. I need to make the fucking mat. You know, um, now you put your hands on the floor and this is this is perfect too. So now you have the angle. You're, not, you're no longer limited to the direction or the alignment of the machine. Now you take the machine, you take the, the workout on the floor and you can literally just move your hands further out. You know, and that's what I say. You know, at home, you might draw like you know a pentagram you know you know you might grow like a circle around the the micro uh and and then you can actually start to do this exercise um with your hands slightly off the reason that i like that stuff is because on the mega we we, we tend to be for those of you that the mega for over 10 years 20 years now uh you know it's we have a tendency of just working in a very linear fashion because we have to work in the way the machine is, is made. But what I wanted to do with the micro, I wanted you to do different exercise that are complementary to the mega. So you cannot do this on the mega. So putting your hands on the floor and now you work diff at a different angle and that will, again, you know, strengthen basically your entire areas because now you're working through different range of motion, different angles. So uh, that's what I want you to try. I don't, I don't want you to do only the mega exercise on the micro. I want you to adapt them using the floor because it's fantastic, right? Uh, especially when we go into the, uh, um, the, 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 the side planks uh, using the carriage. Uh, we have the mountain climber, which is kind of a catfish, okay? Uh, so when you do the catfish, your obliques are going to, to work, okay? So your obliques have to work. But if you want to do it more like obliques, like doing the, the, the catfish, then you can have the individual movement of the legs, and that is going to trigger more oblique stabilization. Uh, yes, you can also do a twisted version, but that's like like the that's that's a twister. Oh, okay. Okay, now we're going to go into the side sweep. So. These one right over here on the floor, I fucking love these ones. These are amazing. Again, no springs if you, want, if you don't want to have to do it on the other side. If you're going to use a spring, use the white spring. Don't use the black spring. The black spring is too much. Use the white spring, and then you're going to basically do your side-to-side -side exercise. And then do we, can we have a top view over here? There you go. And so if you look over here, basically at Heather's feet. You can't really see the feet, but the feet are not moving. She's basically swinging a body around uh, the position of the feet. And that is mobilizing the obliques in a way that we can't get it done on the mega. And that's what I love this one. So right over here, the obliques, see the, 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 uh, the length is not changing, but she's working the obliques stabilizing through this different plane of motion and um, um, I forgot kind of which plane of motion. There's like two planes of motion, that's one. I think might be even three, three planes. Uh, there's the front and then the side one. I have to brush up on my planes of motion. Um, highly effective. But again, only effective if you are not uh, dropping the hips, if you're keeping the body alignment. Good. Have you guys tried this one? Yes? You like it? Yeah, if you do a minute, and then if you want to, so you could do a minute going back and forth, hold it right there, and now just uh, uh, move your hips up and down, pulse at the hips. And now you can do a hip pulse, and that's totally fine. 
Now that's fine over here to do this because we're not collapsing because then you're in control over here. Okay, there's a difference between pulsing the hips up and that and just staying there collapsing the body. You guys see that, right? Because when you're pulsing up and down, you are contracting, you're activating the muscles on the side. So your spine is fine. But when you let it collapse, you're not engaging the muscles. And that's when you add basically uh, added tension to the joints. Does it make sense? Yes? Okay. And then, of course, then we can do the same thing on the other side. So here, there's a ton of exercise you can do on the side. So I love this one right here. Yes. This one is probably a little easier because you can basically roll the carriage from side to side. And oh, you're doing super good. Look at that. Love that. Yeah, this is really good. Yeah, that fly is just, that fly loves you. That fly is coming home with you, Heather. Yes. Man. Amazing how a little fly like this can just like, you know, <laughs> okay. Anyway, all right, so same thing over here. Uh, from that position, what you can do, you can raise the hips up and down, do the pulse if you want to. You can hold it there. You can just wave your arm as well, okay? Each one of these action will trigger uh, the obliques or will enhance uh, the movement of the obliques. Oh, this one, yes, now Heather's going full board. Look at that. Nice. Can you do this moving the carriage back and forth? Woo. That's like, this is like, this is like driving and chewing gum at the same time. Only a few people can do that effectively. <laughs> wow. This is actually very good. Uh, when you do things like this, by the way, I love it. Why? Because you have to think about the exercise very important so every single time you have to think coordinating upper and lower body amazing for the brain especially for aging population out there the more you have to activate your mind in the exercise it has amazing benefit this is why i think uh, all the older uh, people over there should do the lunge because the lunge you have to rethink about the balance the lunge is a total mind body exercise uh so is this one this one is fantastic especially the way heather did it i don't think you could add anything to it no, you know, very good. Um, so we have the side sweep that we showed you. And then, of course, uh, last week, we kind of showed you the planks. And there were some planks that were also oblique. So these ones are, um, again, uh, my favorite. Uh, it just, uh, it just what, you, what you get is you get this lateral mobilization over here of the, on the obliques. And it just works everything. This, the lats, everything. So you can be on your elbows. If you can't do the exercise, you can get on your knees. Um, you can have one foot on top of the next, right? You can have one leg up if you want to. You can have two feet up. No, that's for the Zohan actually. <laughs> All right. And the obliques, this one, yes, I love that. So when you have your elbows on the carriage, we call this hammerhead. And then when you have your feet on the carriage, we call it the sea serpent. Don't ask. <laughs> it could have been a lot worse, trust me. Um, okay, excellent. Now, for the obliques, uh, what else do we have left uh, on this one? We had... Oh, snap. Yes. So you have the one where you have your feet. All right, so Lexi, thank you. Are you watching Lexi today? She's not on today? Um, yes, so Lexi made those ones. So uh, I actually think that you know, in Pilates, there is an exercise on the reformer called the snake. And that I think is very similar to the snake. Uh, this is a fantastic movement, again, uh, for your obliques. You know, it just works everything. And again, I like it because you have the ribs and the hips slightly at a, a, a slightly rotated out, and you can just see it right there in the abs working. Uh, same thing here. Um, you don't need to put a lot of tension, and I would do this one with zero or one white spring. And on the legreehome.com, I am going to redo all the springs to a white spring since we have the white spring coming now. And for those of you at home, who have not purchased a micro yet. Uh, the, all the new micros starting, uh, I think, July will all come a spring of each, you know, one white, one black, one red, and 
whatever. So same thing over here. You can have your knees on the floor, hands on the carriage, and same movement. So even if you love the twister and you've done it many times, try these different variations. You know, challenge yourself because it's the same exercise, but yet very different. And um, also, uh, uh, also another tip for you is try to put your micro at the same spot at the house and then put points of repairs. You know, I don't know, you can put maybe like a glass, you can put, you know, just, you know, a, a pencil, whatever, and then kind of map out the area because that's what I want to do, you know. So next year, not uh, this year, we have too much shit going on. Next year, I'll do a giant fucking mat, okay, with basically a whole bunch of symbols and, you know, if you want to, call Satan or whatever, you'll be able to use that as well if you turn the mat over, you know, very cool mat. Uh, but anyway, use this point of reference on the floor so that uh, you can try different body alignment, you know, just like Heather showed you. So that one version of, uh, of uh, this uh, snake, basically, you could do it with your feet anywhere on the carriage. It doesn't have to be a, anywhere on the floor. It doesn't have to be a, a specific point. And you could literally draw um, you could literally try at different points on the floor and you'll get different results. Yes. Excellent. Oh, see all this exercise. Me, I'm such a boring guy. You know, I, I get on the micro, I do my reverse giant wheelbarrow. I do my super crunch twist, you know, I do like, you know, I'll do my twister and I just like pretty much that's kind of what I do on, on the machine. I love it. Oh, I know what I forgot. Senor, we're going to bring the 45 pound. Let's bring it. I have to show you something. I was doing that last week. Huh? Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah thank you. Oh, I want to show you something. So we're, we're making, we're making a ramp for the micro, you know, because you know me, it's, it's never good enough, all right? So if you don't have the ramp, try this. You're going to love it. If you have anything like a wooden plank, uh, if you have, um, you know, uh, anything that is sturdy and is just not very high, right? And I'm going to show you. We're going to grab a, a 45 plates over here, and then we're going to put it on the back. It's fantastic. I got to tell you guys, we've been doing this for a whole week. Everybody's getting the abs so fucking sore. You're welcome, everyone. Ooh, it's so good for the body. All right, I'm gonna put this right over here. There you go, perfect. All right, all right. So, what have we done here? We took a 45. So that's actually good for the obliques as well because this over here, you see, this is lifted over here. Just we're talking about maybe an inch of elevation. That's all you need. But you can see right over here the. Uh, that that angle, and now you can do. Oh yeah, the kneeling tor the the kneeling torso the sideway like this. I fucking love this one. That's a good one. Yeah. See, I get I get. You know, I'm so focused on doing the next machine. I forget what this one can do. Uh, love this. This is amazing, guys. Try it right now. Put your cat underneath the micro, or put your dog, or maybe your husband. You know, your your son, your daughter. You know, and just put the micro on top of them, and then uh, do this exercise. So. This is a kneeling crunch, side crunch. Love it. Absolutely. Um, you're going to be amazed how much that little elevation will add to the, the, the training. Uh, same thing if you do a, a twister, a uh, French twist, same thing. You know, you'll, you'll love it. And you don't need to bring it very high. You know, you can maybe bring it twice as high, but just, just even that, that level right here is plenty. Then you can feel right away um, the lats more engaged. And I like when the lats are more engaged, it really helps you to uh, get into the obliques a lot more. Have you guys tried to do this at home with uh, elevating your micro? Not yet. I know probably if you guys have seen Daron, Daron has done it already. Yes, so uh, Daron will be actually gonna get the prototype of the ramp. I'm gonna see what he can do with that, uh, with that one. Huh? Who's doing that? Oh, there you go. Nice. What do you think, Swan? You like it? Swan, did you like it? Yeah? Type it in the comment. We can hear you. Yes? Yeah. Yeah, it adds a little bit. So 
you can do this with every exercise, right? So the plank, the lunges, all that stuff. Um, uh, yeah, even even the back lunge, the express lunge, you know, try that. Uh, it's it's it, that that added dimension is great. Um, when you do the um, uh, uh, the express lunge or the back lunge on the back, you're going to definitely feel the glutes a lot more because of that elevation. This is why I've been always obsessed with the ramps because it just the ramp doesn't even make the exercise more difficult. It changes the anatomy of each exercise. So as, as soon as you have a little bit of elevation, you're going to get the lats, a lot more of the lats. And me, I'm a lats guy. I just love the lats. So this is good. Okay, so I'm going to remove that now, guys. But definitely try that. All right. What else do we have for the obliques? We have the French twist in the back. Okay, so let's put that back over here. Here we go. There you go. Perfect. Okay, go for it. So put the white spring though. And remember, we want the white spring because form over resistance. Once you really get good, then you put the black spring. And once you, you know, exhale the black spring, you put the gray spring. After the gray spring, you put the red spring. Good, excellent. So same thing over here for the French twist. I'm very partial to the exercise on the back of the micro. So when I do the exercise on the micro or the mega, it's always on the back. Uh, like I say, reverse giant wheelbarrow. Uh, oh, we can do the, um, the super crunch with the twist. Okay, we'll do that next. Um, that one, and then always up and then at the ramp. I just love the ramp. So I just, uh, I feel like more of a fatigue, a muscular fatigue with the elevation. Uh, so anyway, so for the French twist, same thing as a twister. Now uh, on this one, you can keep the shoulders right above the wrist. It doesn't matter because your shoulders, your triceps and your lats are going to be activated by the spring from the carriage. So you're no longer relying on just gravity as a source of resistance. You're also now pulling against the spring. So you have two sources of tension, gravity and the springs from the carriage. Uh, arms are straight, elbows are not locked so that your triceps are absorbing the impact. And then over here, uh, uh, Heather is working the right side of the obliques. Uh, shoulders, head is facing straight down, and then the hips are slightly turned out. Again, we want the rotation of the ribs around the hips to further engage the obliques. Good. Same thing over here on the back end. We can put the hand, you can pull from the knees, you can put your hands on the platform, you can do the side plank every single movement that we did on the front. But remember that on the back end, we are working against the spring. On the front, the spring is helping us against gravity. So it's a different, um, it's a different story. Front, much easier. And then we go on the back much harder. There's not really a middle ground. Either you're working against gravity and the spring or you're working against gravity with the help of the spring. Yeah, so in that side plank over here, just like we showed you last week, you know, you can actually do this, the swing. So that's what I teach when I do the class. When I do my macro event class, right, guys? You know, sometimes there's not a space between uh, the micros. Uh, so yeah, I, don't do the, uh, I don't do the lateral movements on the side of the, uh, of the micro, but I'll do those ones like that. And it's super effective. When you do this uh, variation of the side plank, you want to make sure, uh, Christian, can we have a, a top view on this one? You want to make sure that the hip over here is not moving. So as Heather is moving basically the leg back and forth, you can see that she's retaining a basic structure, that her, uh, her body is not going all over the place. Only that left leg is actually moving back and forth. And then if you want to do more of the obliques, you can bring the left elbow to the left arm. So the left elbow to the left knee. Okay, so that's another way. So that is a, a, a super way to engage your obliques, by the way, because now your body is really performing all kinds of action. Nice, excellent. Okay. Uh, the other one that we have 
is with in the river super crunch series you place your feet underneath the strap or you can put your feet underneath uh, the platform and then basically you are as you pull your spine forward you bring the opposite elbow to the opposite knee perfect and i love this one uh i've been doing this one since i made the pro formers so since 2006 but that's what i'm telling you if you have lard around the waist ain't gonna show anything so that's my fucking problem i gotta not do more obliques exercise i gotta step off the uh all the sugar that everybody's feeding me you know um so this one yeah and then soul train okay so another fantastic oblique exercise i'm telling you this is i'm telling you this is a core killer this machine um soul train but when you do the soul train when you teach the soul train you have to be strategic first you keep your body facing forward okay so keep your body facing forward and then only do the movement of the legs back and forth because essentially there you go as you straighten one leg you bend the other okay so you do that first you have to really think about this one this is what gets people in trouble once you have the movement of the legs then you add the uh that you had the twist there you go that's it and then this is fantastic because now this one is also working all the functions of the obliques very nice yes i mean if you do this like this exercise with the side plank, the French twist, the twister, you know, you know, you like the, the snake on the side, or you could do the, the side sweep, you golden, you know. And like I said, you know, if you guys want us to do like an oblique class, we will if you want to do just, you know. Oh, obliques and inner thighs. There you go. See, perfect. Excellent. So man, that's gonna be uh whew, that's gonna be a uh, intense. Yes. Oh, okay. That's another way. Oh, by the way, so we are getting, uh, since we are getting into the home market, uh, we are going to be having a series of uh, all kinds of little equipment for home. We have a series of bungees, you know, and then you can pick your strength. So you will be able to uh, attach those bungees to the micro if you want to and do those kind of uh, exercise that way. Uh, when the little black box come out, you know, same thing. You can basically start to uh, mix and match accessories with the micro. Uh, that's also another grind. That's also a really good one. Yes. Um, when we have the pulley system for the micro, you still have the pulleys, right? Okay. Um, no, you can use, you can keep those. When we have the pulleys, you will be able to do actually uh, the tailbone torso twist on the carriage. Because even me, if my big ass, I can sit on that carriage. So if I can do it, you guys can do it. Okay. And then you'll see, you'll be able to do this exercise because basically the pulley system on the, on the micro uh, is going to be like having the pulley on the mega. So you'll have those, your, your pulleys on the back end and you can do more exercise like you do on the mega. Okay. Very good. What else do we have over here? I think that's it for... Oh, that's a whole different way. Okay, that's a different way of pulling. Yes. I like that. You are so creative. I love it. But that's going to be different, right? So this is going to be different that if you do it on the mega or on the macro and the pulley system. Why? Because, yeah, because the first of all, you're using the, uh, well, that's not a bungee in there, right? Okay, yeah. That's just a cable. Yes. So the tension is going to be different because it's not pulling from the carriage, it's pulling from the bar. So you're going to feel probably more of an extrinsic pull uh, when you use that, uh, the, um, um, uh, that cable. But I like that. That's actually worked really well. Yes, I love that, actually. You could use that for the chest opener and the sexy back. Yeah. And if you, if you can fit on the carriage, that's pretty good. I like that. Nice. All right, guys. Any questions so far? Any exercise that you have any question? Swan, have you been doing all the exercise? Almost? Yes? Uh, anything else, guys? Any obliques? 
Any exercise you want us to review? Anything that you had a question about? No? Okay. Well, thank you very much, guys, for joining us. Um, we're going to be doing the uh, um, obliques and inner thighs class on Sunday. And then I think Janie or Jamie is joining us. Janice. Janice, I don't know if you're watching tonight, but you're going to join us. You. Inner thighs, outer thighs. And we're doing that when? After the Dominica. Okay. At the end. Okay. <laughs> All right. Probably at the end of May. Uh, and remember, guys, we're also doing an amazing event in San Diego uh, on Saturday, June 12th. And that's going to be at the Intercontinental Hotel at uh, Marina del Rey. Yeah, to think about this one. I've been practicing all fucking weekend saying that word. Uh, it's going to be great. And I might have a little surprise, you know, middle surprise for the noon and the 2 p.m. I don't know if you guys used to take my classes in West Hollywood, but in West Hollywood, you know, at the studio, I had a mezzanine with a DJ. And a DJ is fun. I fucking love having class with DJ. I can teach all day long with a DJ. But what I used to do as well, I used to have Congo drummers coming in and just like fucking drumming, you know, and that was the tit. So I'm going to try to bring a few Congo drummers to the event. Uh, I don't think they'll be able to make it to the 8 or the 10 a.m. And I don't know. We're going to try. But we're, that's definitely the direction I'm going. So if you can make it, it's going to be a great event. And there's going to be tons of vendors this time. Yeah, we have a lot of people participating in the event. So it's almost sold out. I know, yeah. We sold almost everything the first week. So, uh, But we do have rooms at uh, room at uh, the noon and the 2 p.m. Uh, we will do, we will have one of the class recorded, but it's going to be, it's not going to be the class that you guys are going to want to do the, 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 the drummers because that's going to be the royalty-free uh, music class. So it's kind of, mm. <laughs> all right, not the good music. Uh, but anyway, uh, thank you guys for watching. And uh, oops, hang on a sec. You were mentioning, Pam is saying, you were mentioning the different springs. Are they available now besides the black and red spring for the macro? Yes, you can buy them now. And we should be able to ship them to you guys next month. So I'm going to double check, but I think the springs are on the way here. And um, I don't know if I'm going to do an extension for the spring so you can hook more than four springs on the micro. Uh, I think four spring is enough. Uh, but definitely, I think the white spring is definitely going to be a, a, a great addition uh, just because the black spring is just too heavy for some exercise. So the white will be very good. Yeah. I'm actually even, you might even want to put two whites and a black and a gray. You know, you might want to drop a red and then just have that. Uh, so it's up to you. But anyway, thank you for watching. We love you. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, you know, anything you want us to cover, just let us know. And then we're going to keep doing this tutorial until you guys get fed up of us. And then that's it. All right. Bye, everyone. Thank you, beautiful.